another important part of the intestine is the large intestine or simply called large gut. I will show you how to hold the large gut in an anatomical position. Before that you must know what is the extent of the large gut, where it starts and where it ends. The large gut starts from the cecum and it ascends upwards becoming ascending colon followed by transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum and anon canal. All these parts are the parts of the large gut and the large gut is having some specific anatomical features. They are called cardinal features and these three cardinal features of large gut are one is the circulation, number two is the tinea or tinea coli and number three is the appendix epiploica. I will show you all these three important structures and then how to hold it the large gut in anatomical position. First of all you have to identify which one is the proximal part that is cecal site. The most dilated part of the large gut is the cecum. With the cecum. The length of cecum is about 6 centimeter but breadth 7.5 centimeter. But the internal diameter and external diameter of the large gut is different in different places or different sides of the colon. So, the mean internal diameter of the large gut is about 4 to 4.8 centimeter. Then it may be asked the small gut and large gut in what respect it is called large gut and in what respect it is called small gut. It is not due to the fact that the small gut it is small in length and large gut it is large in length. It is not like that. It is just reverse. The length of small gut including duodenum it will be 20 feet 10 inches because duodenum 10 inches and jejuna ileum 20 feet. So, 20 feet 10 inches in length for the small gut. But in the large gut the total length of large gut it is about 130 centimeter for the colon and as a whole the large gut about 1.5 meter in contrast to 6.5 meters length of the small gut. So, by length small gut it is longer than the large gut. Then in what respect I will call it as a large gut because of the diameter. If you see the diameter of the small gut particularly a jejunum it is externally 4 centimeter and internal diameter 3 centimeter. Ileal site external diameter 3 centimeter, internal diameter 2.5 centimeter. So, internal diameter for jejunum 3 centimeter, ileum 2.5 centimeter, but for large gut it is about 4.8 centimeter. So, because of the larger caliber or larger diameter of the large gut, it is called large gut, not due to its length. So, it is clear. Then what are the parts? I told you it starts with cecum, is the most dilated part, this is the cecum. And in the cecum, you <laughs> notice it closely. So, in the cecum, then this part is a terminal part of the ileum. So, the ileum enters into the cecum. This is the terminal part of the ileum, enters into the cecum. So, this region is the ileocecal junction. So, inside you will get the ileocecal orifice which is guarded by a valve, the valve of talpius, it is inside and below the ileal orifice another structure is there, this is called vermiform appendix or simply called appendix. It is about 6 to 10 centimeter in length and it is hanged by a fold of peridoneum called meso appendix, this one is meso appendix. But this meso appendix does not reach up to the tip of the appendix. So, this is the base of the appendix, then body of the appendix, then tip of the appendix. And the distance from the ileocecal junction to the appendicular orifice is about, is about 2 centimeter, this distance. So, it is below the ileocecal orifice. Now, it is clear this is cecum, this is the terminal part of the ileum and this is appendix. So, it will be on the right side. Then the next part is the ascending colon which is about 15 centimeter in length ascending colon. Then transverse colon starts. So, there is a junction between the ascending colon and transverse colon. So, how to identify the junction? The, the junction is identified by means of the fold of peritoneum. This one, this fold of peritoneum that is called the transverse mesocolon. This mesocolon is absent in the ascending colon and descending colon. 
only present in the transverse colon and in the distal part in the sigmoid colon. But here you see this is the transverse colon, mesocolon. So where the mesocolon starts, that means the transverse colon starts. So before that it is ascending colon and here it is bent like this and this bending of the colon is called the colic flexor and it is on the right side, so right colic flexor and this colic flexor, it is on the under surface of the liver, so hepatic flexor. So hepatic flexor or right colic flexor is the bend or junction between the ascending colon and transverse colon. So next part is transverse colon which is about 50 centimeter length, the largest part of the colon, 50 centimeter and it is having this mesocolon. And after that, again descending colon starts. The junction between the transverse colon and descending colon is identified again by means of the transverse mesocolon, which is present only in the transverse colon, not in the descending colon. So here also there is a bend. So this bend is called a left colic flexor or here spleen is there. Spleen on the medial side having a, an impression for this colic flexor, so called splenic flexor. So right side hepatic flexor, left side splenic flexor. From this flexor, the descending colon starts. But of these two flexor, right and left, the right sided flexor will be at a lower level than the splenic flexor because spleen is at a higher level and liver is large right lobe. It pushes the colon to have to, have to some extent downwards. So the hepatic flexor or right colic flexor will be about 5 centimeter below than the level of splenic flexor. So this is the anatomical position so that this transverse colon it forms a v-shaped loop or u-shaped loop and my right hand forming a flexor and left hand forming a flexor and this is to some extent lower this is to some extent upper this is the anatomical position but before that you must identify yes it is a large gut not small gut i already told you the large gut having three cardinal features now i am showing you the three cardinal features of the large gut that is tinea coli, then appendices abiploica and circulation or hostation. But all these three cardinal features they are absent in the rectum. Though it is a part of the large gut but all these features are not present in the rectum and anal canal. And in the cecum also you will not get the appendices abiploica and hostation. It starts above it. And this hostation and appendix aploica, they are more numerous towards the or more prominent towards the distal part of the colon. That means the distal part of the transverse colon and descending colon. And the less appendix aploica and less hostation in the ascending colon and proximal part of the transverse colon. Now to identify the tinea coli, you identify the appendix. This is the base of the appendix. So from the base you trace it upwards. If you closely see this line, this is the tinea coli and it ascending upwards, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon and up to the sigmoid colon you will get this tinea. There are three tinea. This tinea is nothing but the aggregation of longitudinal folds of the musculature on the wall of the colon. The length of the large gut is more than the length of this musculature. Then what happens? There is shortening of the length of the uh, large gut and it becomes puckered. And for this, the circulation is produced. So circulation it is due to the presence of tinea. Because of the disproportional length of the tinea and the large intestine or large gut. The large gut is longer than the tinea. So it should be puckered. So circulation is formed and I am showing you the circulation. It is very much prominent. Circulation is, you can see the circulation, the all circulation. If you see, you can see the circulation. All the circulation. Like the shape of the waste pipe, if you pull the waste pipe and you stretch it, you can see the circulation like this. Here also, this is the circulation and all these fat laden perineal pouches are called appendices epiploica. 
all this. Uh, these are more numerous towards the distal part of the transverse colon and the descending colon. Here are more numerous, but in this side you see they are less in ascending colon. So, distally you will get more appendices, epiploica, which are pedinal pouches containing fat. And if you see this specimen, also this is specimen of the large guard, here you can see the transverse mesocolon very nicely disposed. Can you see the transverse mesocolon? It is hanging downwards. My right hand, right colic flexor, left hand, left colic flexor in between the transverse colon with transverse mesocolon. So, this is the anatomical position of the large gut in this specimen. It is clear how to hold the large gut in anatomical position and what are its three cardinal features and what are the main important components of the large gut.